Hello, this is the Convergence Forum of the International Intercommunalist Convergence. And today we are able to discuss between Belgium and here in Quebec. Myself, I'm Dr. Abraham Weisfeld, and I'm in Montreal, and we are talking with Red Wasp in Belgium. And uh, Red Wasp is a, also a very experienced uh, political organizer and activist. And we were discussing the current uh, context and what the prospects are for the defeat of the Zionist state. And um, I, I wonder if you could reiterate, you know, the points that you were making, because I think that we should analyze them further. So I believe, and I'm more or less on the same level here, or the same uh, ideas as uh, Ilan Pape, that we're real, real, we're witnessing the final stage of Zionism, and it will probably be brutal, but it will not. It will not take ten more years. I, I really doubt if the the, the Zionist colony will ever celebrate its eightieth birthday in a few years. Um, there mm -hmm. is militarily, they are really losing the war um, in Gaza. Uh, They've been able to flatten all the buildings, all the hospitals, all the universities, but um, the resistance is still there, is still fighting them, is still taking out their Merkava tanks, is still... Um, so they're still active. In Lebanon, I really don't understand the, the suicide course they're going in, in Lebanon now, because they will lose that war even, even worse. Um, Hezbollah is has rockets that can reach all the way to the south to, 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 uh, uh, of the Zionist colony, while the Ansar Allah in Yemen, they, they can reach all the way to Tel Aviv and probably even more to the north. The whole country is under threat. There is a mass exodus, um, minimum 500,000, but that's, that, that's a number that, that's been going around since the beginning of the year, so it's probably doubled, tripled, or even more um, by now. So hundreds of thousands of settlers are fleeing the country going back to their uh to their homeland in europe or the, the uh, americas financially the zionist colony was in big trouble one year ago before uh october 7th and this has it, this, this has only worsened um the, the, the war is strangling the the, the whole colony fin financially i really believe that that uh, the contradictions as they are now uh, within the colony are so strong that, that they, will, they will not be able to resolve them. And the only thing that keeps the Zionist colony alive artificially now is the, 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 the billions of dollars that uh, 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 in money and in uh, weapons that come in from uh, the imperialist core nations. But the governments in the imperialist core, they have more and more problems with their own population who are in the streets protesting, who are boycotting. So I think that all possible solutions are drying out and we are witnessing the end of a, of a, a terrible settler colonial project. I would agree to the first uh, point uh, that we are entering into a new stage of developments with respect to the Zionist state. But um, I don't think that we can see the prospect of its uh, uh, decline so so readily, even though it is uh, certainly warranted. And uh, the fact that uh, it is necessary to to have the Zionist state, you know, removed as a as a deciding factor in the life of the Palestinian people is evident. You know, and the desire, you know, to that this would happen as soon as possible is evident as well. But what we have to take into consideration is the base of support that Zionism has. First of all, it has the bipartisan support of the United States of America, the imperial center of the world still. Two, it has a solid granite pillar of support amongst the Zionist movement itself, which has cultivated its membership over decades of long-term work. And it's the long-term strategy of the Zionists that operates and that has worked up to now because they took the easy course of uh, hooking on to uh, some imperial power that would grant them uh, a certain uh, degree of autonomy in the claim to be exercising uh, the national self-determination of the Jewish people, even though they have no such mandate. And uh, 
these two uh, factors, you know, the fact that they have this solid support of the imperial core and that they have a continuing pillar, a granite pillar of support amongst the uh, Jewish people itself are the determining factors and nothing else because the resistance is not as strong as one the Zionist state and to the United States of America. This is the context we are facing. And we can see some of the consequences of that in terms of the technological warfare that they've in, uh, inflicted upon the Hezbollah movement and taken out its, uh, uh, I think a secondary leadership as a whole has been taken out. And so they have no, uh, no uh, communication system human communication system left with which to they could able to uh, coordinate a, uh, a massive attack on the Zionist state. That seems to have been eliminated, unfortunately. So Iran, the factor of retaliation against the violations of sovereignty of Iran, including the recent uh, uh, wounding of the Iranian ambassador in Beirut, during the recent onslaught. But Iran, even though it's a regional power now, even though it has, you know, its own um, war material production facilities and everything like that, still is not strong enough to be able to take on the Zionist state by itself. Even And uh, even, even if Israel, which is not its real name, uh, you know, is... Uh, is uh, willing to take on Iran, you know, by itself without the support of the uh, United States of America. Nonetheless, <clears throat> Israel has the air superiority that is determinant in, in that context as well. And that's why Iran is reluctant to get into a war condition with the Zionist state. Internally, the resistance of the Palestinian movement is not well enough organized. First of all, there is a stalemate with Hamas and the other resistance, resistance uh, groups in Gaza. <clears throat> the resistance there is not able to uh, militarily defeat the occupation military, the IDF, otherwise known as the Israel Death Force. And um, the Zionist military cannot defeat Hamas either, which is admirable, but the Palestinian people are suffering for it and they're going to... Um, you know, be forced into a, a mass famine and mass uh, mass casualties, mass murders are are going to be happening on a on a on a endemic scale there in Gaza because the crossing points are still being closed by the Zionist military and there's only allowing in between fifty and ninety trucks a day, whereas they need five hundred, six hundred trucks a day to feed the population and another the additional hundred trucks, you know, for rebuilding. Well, it's not happening. They're under siege still, and they're being starved to death. And now the uh, diseases are going to be rampant. And like in the Nazi uh, death camps, you know, when typhus was a rampant epidemic and, and uh, all the Jewish uh, inmates, hostages were dying of typhus, like Anne Frank, who died, you know, one week before the end of the war of typhus. And of course, the Nazis said it was because the Jewish people are dirty, <laughs> you know, like, you know, and not because they were living under siege, you know, with no food, <laughs> really, you know. So this is the Zionists are going to say the same thing. So it's you know very dire situation now, in in the, in that sense. And you know the 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 there's not much that we can do about you know the imperial core being as powerful as it is and being able to you know uh, allocate you know unlimited you know a num billions of dollars you know for the Zionist campaign and for the uh, uh, the Ukrainian neo nazi regime either you know the, the, the you know uh, tens of billions of dollars are being fed into these two conflicts and the united states couldn't care less you know because they're the ones to determine you know the credibility and the viability of the american dollar up till now now, the thing that we can do something about, especially as the Jewish Socialist Bund, is that we can dissolve the granite pillar of support underneath Zionism amongst the Jewish people. 
there's not much we can do about you know the Christian Zionists, you know, because they're into their ideological fantasy delusion of the return of their uh, of their God uh, by fulfilling you know uh, the basically the expulsion of the Jewish people from their own Christian nation states and the sacrifice of the Jewish people in the war, you know, against uh, the local Orientals. Okay, something like that. Not much we can do about that craziness. But amongst the Jewish people, there we have a key role to play. Why? Mm -hmm. Because the reason the Zionists get their power, the reason the Zionists get the willpower amongst the Jewish people to fight, kill, and die for the Zionist state and that uh, golden calf that they've built there is because of what is called in political science, you know, national self-determination, okay? So, you know, the especially after the Holocaust, the Zionists played on the Holocaust to say that, you know, uh, the um, Jewish self-defense based upon the principle of self-determination includes the right to a state, includes the right of the state to determine for itself how it's going to defend itself and nobody else is going to tell it any different, you know, even in international law, because of the Holocaust, the Jewish people have a priority that supersedes international law and can do anything it wants, you know, to anybody else, because the Jewish people are more oppressed than anybody else, supposedly. This is the logic of Zionism. Mm -hmm. yes. First of all, we can expose the fallacies in this, because the Zionists you know, were the ones who were trying to collaborate with the Nazis in the first place. But we have a very difficult situation because the previous vanguard leadership of the Jewish people before the Holocaust was the Jewish Bund, which yes. won 17 out of 20 seats, you know, in the Jewish Kahila elections in uh, Warsaw. So the Zionists took over, even though they were previously only 8% of the Jewish population in Europe. So we are operating in a deficit condition. We don't have the membership. We don't have the Jewish working class that was eliminated by the Zionists, by the Nazis. And the Zionists, you know, they let them, you know, be eliminated. Mm -hmm. It is exposed, you know, in the Kastner trials and by the uh, survivor of Velbe, who escaped from uh, Auschwitz, informed the Rabbi Weissmandel and the Zionists, you know, they should be warning the Ukrainian Jewish population not to go to Auschwitz because it's not a summer camp. Mm -hmm. They didn't tell them. And so they went willingly, whereas they could have, you know, blocked the whole system, you know, and everybody would just ride it instead of stepping onto the railway trains, cattle cars. So they eliminated the Jewish working class, which is mainly Bundist. That's what the Zionists allowed to happen. And it was to their advantage. Now they're taking advantage of the situation. And when we try to you know, uh, speak to the Jewish people in the name of the Jewish people, in the name of Jewish self-determination, were censored or put into jail, like I was. Mm -hmm. So we have, we're facing a very difficult situation. It's not going to be so quick and easy, you know, to overcome these factors. Thirdly, mm -hmm. those who say that, you know, that this uh, conflict, uh, seven-front conflict, is discouraging the Israelis individually, so they're going to be leaving, and that, that that'll be the deciding factor. Well... What I've read so far is that only 17% of the Israeli you know, citizenry have dual citizenship. That is, that they have the passport of another country, so they can leave and go to the other country and stay there, you know, and not being subject, you know, to a three-month, you know, tourist visa. Okay, that's 17% only. Plus, one has to consider that 50% of the Jewish Israeli population are not, you know, like, Occidental, you know, like Western European, you know, like uh, origin people or Americans, you know, came from New York, Bronx or anything like that. No, they are Jewish Arabs. And they have lost their Arabic language because it wasn't taught in the schools. So all these new generations of Jewish Arabs that have grown up to do the uh, lower working class, you know, positions, you know, on behalf of the Ashkenazi Jewish mm -hmm. Zionist elite, in an apartheid, a double apartheid situation, one apartheid over the Palestinians, another over the Jewish Mizrahim. And, you know, they're not thinking of going back, you know, to the Arab countries from which they came. Because, first of all, the, they're not being welcomed with open arms because they are, first of all, war criminals, because they've gone into the military and trying to produ produce, you know, the results, you know, that convince, you know, everybody that they are good Zionists, which means killing Palestinians, which is what they've done. So how are they supposed to be welcomed back into the Arab countries under such conditions? You know, so they're going to be staying there, you know, and they're going to be fighting and dying and killing, you know, in order to preserve their little plot of land. 
It's a very sort of dire situation, you know. Now, where the Jewish Bund can begin to dissolve the granite column pillar of Zionist support in the Jewish community is in the Jewish diaspora. Here, we have more access to the Jewish people. Ah, mm -hmm. and of course, all these Jewish people living in the diaspora who are 55% of the Jewish population, at least, mm -hmm. have relatives inside the Zionist state that they talk to on a regular basis, especially if it comes to politics, you know, and especially if they have a disagreement, they're going to be talking more. So the influence that we can have on the Jewish population here is going to have a direct influence upon the Jewish population in the Zionist state itself, which is going to be undermining the support for the uh, fascist regime under Netanyahu. So this is the uh, avenue of of uh, a great, gr uh, the greatest uh, avenue of uh, resistance that I can see, you know, for in terms of the work of the Jewish Socialist Bund. In terms of the resistance of the Palestinians, you know, they don't even have the Palestinian workers that were going into uh, occupied 48 territories of the Zionist state. They weren't even unionized. You know, there's some sort of an association under the PA, but it's not a union. It's like it's some sort of controlling apparatus. And when the PA, you know, uh, declares a general strike, you know, to protest, you know, some sort of massacre, you know, just to show that they're doing something, all the shops close, you know, everybody stays at home. But the 160,000 workers with a permit to go and work in the 48 territories, they still go and work at 5 o'clock in the morning. They come home at 7 o'clock. You know, how come they're not on general strike? You know? Wasn't that um, wasn't that stopped after uh, uh, October 7th? Now 7? it stopped. That, that That's right. No, yeah. no Palestinians are allowed, are allowed to in. enter uh, the Green Line colony. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, you know, the, the excuse before, you know, that was made, you know, for why there was no unionization and no general strike amongst the uh, permit holders who, who went to work in the 48 territories was that they had to support their families. And without the support that they have, you know, in terms of the wages for the families and the money that circulates in the Palestinian economy, the Palestinian economy would collapse and all the shops, you know, would go bankrupt, da -da 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 -da, you know, so maybe it's true. But still, they weren't organized, you know. They should have been going on a general strike, you know, a day of general strike for every Palestinian that's killed. That would stop the killing of the Palestinians. You know, like, and they wouldn't have, uh, you know, they would have lost a day's, you know, wages, you know, but so what? You know, they would have still survived and they would have been paid, you know, for the rest of the week. They had a strategy to follow there, but they didn't. PA, you know, is very disappointing. Even though I worked, you know, with uh, the ambassador in Canada between 1982 and 1985, and I was essentially a diplomat, you know, a charge, charge des uh, as a writer, where I wrote the first book published on Sabra Shatila in 1984, mm -hmm. after the massacre in 1982, in which I analyzed in various ways the genocidal mentality of the Zionist uh, regime and how they organized the Sabra Shatila massacre and how they're susceptible to doing the same thing again, which is now what's, what they're doing in, in Gaza. It's a sort of a replication of what they did in uh, Sabrishtila. And they want to do it, you know, against Balada camp in Nablus, against Anaskar camp in Nablus, against Shanin camp, you know. They wanted, you know, get rid of the Palestinians everywhere. And they're trying to, they weren't. But, okay, if we want to talk about, you know, to the extent to which, to which the Zionist regime has been is being defeated, okay, let's do the other side of the coin then. First of all, the plan that they had with maps and everything, you know, to push the Palestinian population of Gaza into the Sinai desert mm -hmm. under Egyptian control didn't work for two reasons. One, Palestinians refused to leave because they know what was going to be happening. They didn't want it to be like another Nakba. Mm -hmm. They refused to leave, which is incredible, you know, display of, you know, political resistance, you know, incredible. Under mm -hmm. the threat of death, they refused to leave. En masse, mass mentality, you know, this is, you know, the whole people have, have become a revolutionary movement. And two, Egypt would not let them in. They they stationed, you know, like whole platoons of tanks there on on the, on just outside of the crossing point, the um, Ezra, Beit Anun uh, crossing point. And all the soldiers and everything like that, you know, they're not going to let, you know, 
uh, the Zionist uh, military uh, pushed the Palestinians, you know, because what they were going to do is, you know, they were going to bomb the border fence and then bomb behind the Palestinians so that the only place that he could go, that they weren't being bombed, you know, was to go through the fence into the Egypt. But now Egypt has stopped them by military force. Mm -hmm. That is a military defeat, you know, for these Zionist strategy in Gaza. So they're in a stalemate, you know, in terms of the military action. So they cannot win there. So where are they going to go for a win? Lebanon. And they haven't been able to win there either. So where do they go, you know, where the enemy is the weakest, West Bank, Jenin, Nablus, my town. That's where they're going. And they're going into Sector A at nighttime to uh, uh, provoke and uh, attack and, and kill as many, you know, activists as they can, you know, because the people who are going to come out, you know, to stop them in the streets, you know, are activists or potential activists. And so they just, you know, as they've done in many other intifadas previously, they kill off a thousand act activists and then the intifada, you know, slows down and disappears for that generation because they've taken, you know, gotten rid of, you know, the most active elements of that generation. Then it takes another generation to generate another thousand activists, you know, to lead another intifada. But without a strategy, it'll go nowhere. It'll just keep on repeating like that. So, you know, mostly, you know, I'm on the side of the, of the pessimistic view with some sort of remedy in terms of the Jewish Bund's work that's necessary. And the other side, you know, I can see that the Zionist regime can be forced to back down, but it requires a strategy and coordination and uh, something other than just, you know, tit for tat, you know, missile exchanges. I hear though that there's been a, a transfer of uh, military personnel, soldiers from Yemen into Syria ready to take on uh, the Zionist occupation of Golan, perhaps. Mm -hmm. That's also an interesting positive factor. But, you know, the, all of these countries, they do not have the defense systems that they need, you know, to stop the uh, Zionist air power, air supremacy. And uh, that requires S-400 or S-500, you know, Russian uh, surface-to-air missiles to take out, you know, aircraft that are capable of taking out aircraft, like F-35 is what they're using, you know, and they're more sophisticated, they're more radar evading, they're faster. And so they need a more sophisticated, you know, self-defense system. Otherwise, they're not in a position to engage, you know, the Zionist state. On the other hand, Yemen has very successfully done so, and they've isolated, you know, they shut down the port of Eilat. So the southern access to Israel has been shut down. Hmm. What should be done is the airfields military and civilian airfields in the Zionist state should be taken out. And then the F-35s, you know, are useless because either they can't take off or they can't land. So that would take care of the F-35s. That's another way to settle that matter there. But they still need, you know, the uh, the missile, the air defense, surface air missiles as self-defense. Russia should be helping them. Russia has to step in there. China's more reluctant, playing a more long-term game. But Russia now, they have... You know the, you know the justification to do so, because if the United States can give the Ukrainians military, uh, fascist regime there, you know long range missiles and and allow them to use them, you know to, uh, to you know to fire into uh, the Russian Federation, in great distances, maybe even to Moscow, well, then Russia can give you know equivalent missiles uh, to Hezbollah, you know to fire, uh, you know with uh, hypersonic missiles, you know from Hezbollah as well. <laughs> right into uh, the Zionist state too. And then, you know, the Zionist state couldn't go and complain, you know, it's the United Nations, you know, because, you know, the United Nations is supporting Ukraine. So, you know, these are the factors, you know, that we're facing here now. And uh, uh, you would probably judge my my sort of, you know, analysis as, as a more pessimistic than optimistic. And I would agree with that. So I think that we have to get ourselves organized, you know, because we're still in the initial stages of organizing. We're not strong enough, and we have to be. So we have to build. And that's what we're doing here, I suppose. I, I think that um, I, in my life, and I've been struggling for Palestine for 30 years or even more. But I've never seen such a huge resistance movement outside of the country. 
um, mm. in the imperialist core, but also from Jakarta to 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 Seoul to um, all over the the, the global south. Uh, this is something that 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 will have its consequences, especially as you were saying, um, the Jewish communities in the diaspora have a very important task, but they are already fulfilling that task. The, the, there is a whole new uh, anti-Zionist movement of young Jewish people in the diaspora, um, many of whom actually um, try to reconnect with the Bundist tradition. So um, the, the, the Bund is is, is um, actually, I think there will be a revival of the Bund in, 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 in the time to come, uh, and not just as a, a, an organization of a few people who want to keep the the, the 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 praxis going for the next generation well i think the next generation has it arrived and and mm -hmm. they are eager to do uh uh much uh, everywhere i went in the last year all the actions that i've seen um personally um everywhere in all the cities where there was a jewish community the jewish people were among the the the, the vanguard of the the, the anti-zionist protest Alongside with the Muslims and the queers, there, there there's a very very strange front uh, uh, happening. But alhamdulillah, I think it 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 it, mm. it this is one of the things I I try to look at things dialectically. I try to look at the, the small things that are starting to develop. Well, this anti-Zionist movement uh, uh, among uh, young Jewish people um, is one of these things. Um, I think we should also look at the many contradictions. Um, in the Zionist colony itself, there, there is there was some unity in the beginning of the war um, because of all the war propaganda. But this unity is completely gone. The, the, the contradictions between the, the hardline um, Zionists and the liberal Zionists are um, bigger than ever. Uh, I think that that's also something that that makes their state very weak because um, there is no unity among its uh, uh, rulers. Um, the same is actually happening in the United States as well, where uh, the, the contradictions between the Democrat wing of the imperialist party and the, the, the Republican wing, they, they've never been so big as now. Hmm. So I, I think that th th these are all things that, that we have to think of militarily. Um, the, the, um, the, the army, the, 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 the colonial army um, is complaining that there is a lack of tanks, that they don't have enough tanks. There was actually a court case uh, um, not so long ago where uh, women soldiers demanded the right to also um, be in tank brigades. And the army had to say, well, we would like to because we're very feminists and we're very progressive, but we don't have enough tanks. They're destroying them. There are no, um, if you see images um, coming from Gaza right now, they're using old type uh, Merkava tanks because many of their newest uh, uh, models have been destroyed. Hmm. Um, I think the number of casualties, we, we don't hear about it, but if you just try to you look at the the, 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 the video clips by uh, Hassan, by uh, Soraya al Quds, by all the other resistance groups, and you just start tallying how many sure kills there, uh, there there have been how many certainly wounded there have been that's far more than the zionist state is willing to admit they have a problem they don't have enough reserves so militarily this war is 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 really draining them and then there's a complete unbalance i mean if the, the resistance shoots one few thousand dollar missile uh to the zionist state they're able to intercept them because technologically they're so much better, but it costs them a million of dollars to just destroy one, a few thousand dollar missile. If you do that several times every day, that adds up. And right mm -hmm. now there is still, um, Washington is still willing to give a lot of money and to keep funding this. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the Democrat wing of the, the um, Imperial Party in the United States is threatening, will probably lose the elections because they are uh, too much uh, in their support and yeah. Yeah, so yeah. At, at some point they will have to uh, uh, ask whether their votes are more important than the APAC money and I'm not really sure I know APAC is very strong but if they know that they're really losing all their electoral base so we yeah, well, have you know uh, Jill Stein has more support amongst the Muslim Americans than uh, any other candidate yes. you know <laughs> 
Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> yes, the new generations of uh, Jewish people, and there's three new generations that have, you know, joined uh, into the um, Jewish anti-Zionist movement now. Jewish Voice for Peace was the first, and they declared themselves to be anti-Zionist. If not now, and um, not in our name, but the younger generations of activists, more so activists. And they have made public actions in their own name, and they've joined the Palestinian demonstrations, you know, as such. But of course, the media, only they only broke through into the media in the first time when they occupied, you know, the capital rotunda. And there was like mm -hmm. 300, 500, you know, Jewish protesters, you know, against Zionism, you know, right there. And so they had to report on it. They did it a second time and they didn't get reported on, you know. So they, they do the least possible reporting of Jewish opposition. And then they also try to make out that there's no Jewish people inside the student encampments at the various, you know, universities. Uh, and that uh, the encampments are there for, by definition, you know, hostile to the Jewish uh, students who are coming to the campus because there's no Jewish students in the in, in the student encampments, even though, you know, very often they're being led by Jewish students, but they're not uh, declaring themselves as such. And the Jewish organizations that have developed amongst these uh, three generations have not declared themselves to be representative and speaking in the name of the Jewish people. That's the difference. They're only speaking as a collection of individual Jewish peoples, and they're calling themselves Jews. Now, Jews mm -hmm. refers to an individual, uh, and it refers to an object. It is an objectification of a Jewish person, and it is an insult as well that was used in the yellow badges, you know, by the Nazis. And yet they freely use the term, uh, you know, and, you know, and it's incredible, you know, they don't realize, you know, how derogatory the term is. They think, you know, that they're, you know, that, you know, there's no, <laughs> that there's no anti-Semitism in the United States of America, you know, like, and that, uh, and so they, so they, you know, oftentimes when they get to speak, you know, with a media interview, and I saw one young woman say, you know, talking as if she were only an American, you know, that she's an American, therefore she can be, you know, free to think, you know, she's free to protest, you know. And, and therefore, you know, she shouldn't be bothered, you know, but she wasn't talking about, you know, the freedom to protest as a Jewish person. She missed out on the point because to protest as Americans, so what? The Israelis couldn't care less. But if it's known that she's protesting as a Jewish person, even a Jewish American person, if she wants to say that, then, you know, the other Jewish people, you know, are going to be paying attention to that. And the organizations as a whole have to form a federation in which we can call ourselves the uh, representative leadership of the Jewish people, and that the Zionist parties are not representative of the Jewish people, and that they are only claiming to do so, and that the law proclaiming the Zionist state to be a Jewish nation state is uh, uh, ultra virus. It is illegal because it cannot have been made in the name of the Jewish people because 55% of the Jewish people don't have a vote in the Zionist elections. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, you know, a, a significant portion of, of the Jewish Israelis were opposed to that law as well, not to mention the Palestinian citizens who happen to have a vote of 20-25%. So all of these things, you know, have to, you know, go into the political dimension because, you know, just having some bodies out there, you know, getting 200 people arrested who are Jewish in and of itself, you know, is not enough even politically speaking, you know, because it doesn't carry the message that is necessary. The message to be carried is not only as an American, but as a Jewish American. And this has to become known. And has to become known as the Jewish shows and Bund, you know, became known and became, you know, the leadership of the Jewish mm -hmm. people because it satisfied the interests of the Jewish people, the self-defense of the Jewish people. And the, and the good name of the Jewish people, as opposed to the, uh, the fascist, you know, veneer that the Zionists have spread over the minds of the Jewish people. This is a historic fight. And uh, the attempt to install this uh, Jewish nation state is not only a historic, you know, because the nation state, you know, is an obsolete, you know, ancient, you know, like formula, you know, 1648, you know, like, and it also caused, you know, one war after the other in Europe. Europe itself has learned, you know, to overcome the nation state to some extent only. And yet, you know, the Zionists, you know, claim that this is what they were going to do, you know, as a modern Jewish national liberation movement. 
and all they have done done is to lead the you know forty five percent of the Jewish people into a self imposed ghetto. Well armed ghetto, constantly at war. A Sparta ghetto, a Sparta state. And where do they get you know to some conclusion? There is no conclusion to the Zionist uh, ideology. The only thing that they can argue for is continued war. Um, I think you said a few interesting things. Um, you, you gave the example of the great action, by the way, a few hundreds of Jewish people occupying the rotunda. Um, could 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 you have ever imagined that to happen one year ago? Right. Yeah. Uh, um, and the first time, indeed, they were in the media, but that was the exception. But yeah. something else that has changed so much since my very first actions 30 years ago, we do the reporting now. Mm. There is, um, I mean, TikTok, uh, YouTube, there are so many uh, different media. And we are still more or less used to get our information from newspapers and, and, and partly from television. But the younger people that I work with, they... They, they really they have a very uh, healthy uh, distrust in all the bourgeois media and mm -hmm. they they go f look for information themselves mm -hmm. and the younger people among the activists are always there with cell phones filming themselves giving statements so um i remember um like 25 years ago in the media started with the slogan don't hate the media be the media well mm -hmm. we've entered that phase i think that um, th that's another thing. Uh, uh, the United States government wanted to ban TikTok, and because they, they are afraid of that, they they are really afraid of the fact that the monopoly of the bourgeois media has been effectively broken over the last few years. And this is the first major conflict where this plays a role. Mm. Um, and in these new media, there are some very very radical anti-Zionist and radical Jewish voices. Um, I don't know if you know the the, 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 the podcast Bad Hasbara, which is still quite liberal, but they're very... Uh, it, it's a, 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 an American Jewish comedian, and um, he, he's mostly uh, criticizing the, 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 the new completely stupid Hasbara that comes from the uh, Zionist state. Mm -hmm. I remember when uh, the, 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 the Zionist propagandists thought that we were intelligent and they tried to make intelligent propaganda. Now they're just uh, uh, showing pictures of pinup girls or, or trying to get us for tourism. And But I mean, so that, that's one podcast. There is the whole Mate family. Um, a year ago, um, people only knew Gabor because he was a specialist, uh, a trauma specialist. Um, right now, uh, I think that the, 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 the both his sons are becoming more famous and they're, they're they're getting famous for being very outspokenly anti-zionist anti-imperialist they yeah. see the link between ukraine and 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 and, and palestine and so uh there 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 are two um uh they're quite young and they're, they're constantly trying to redefine their their identity so i believe that um, Hebrew would be the the, the the identification that they have right now. Um, uh, Hebrew young men from Israel who have a, a podcast called One State Solution, which is very interesting because they're going very deep into how Zionism is, is not just a political movement, but it has it, it, it functions as a cult and indoctrinates people. And they're mm -hmm. trying to find ways uh, to help their family, the 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 people around them to um, break with the, the, this cultish thing. Um, there, of course, the, the people from Mundawais, the people from Electronic Intifada, who um, the Jewish people who work there are also very proudly both anti-Zionist, anti-imperialist, and Jewish, and they explain that the, you you cannot uh, get the just like for me being. Being a Muslim and being an anti-imperialist, I don't know where one begins and the other ends. It's like just it's it, it it's two um, sides of the very same uh, identity, and uh, many of the the, the new generation of, of Jewish anti-Zionist, anti-imperialist uh, also have the same link. They're not doing this um, despite of their Jewishness or uh, completely out of it, but they're doing it because their understanding of their Jewishness pushes them to to. To to uh, towards solidarity with the Palestinian people, hmm. and there was an, an, another thing. 
we shouldn't focus too much on the, 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 the nationalist propaganda from the Zionists because they want to propagate their project as the the the, the national the, the the fulfilling of the the, the self destination of the people and all this 19th century nationalist uh, rhetoric but in their core it's not a nationalist but an imperialist colonial pro uh, uh, project and this nationalism as far as i understand it is on the level of the propaganda that's what they want us to believe that's what they want us to discuss do jewish people have the right for a nation state or not but the, the zionist state is not the state of the jewish people is not a state for the jewish people is not a state to protect the jewish people it's uh, an american european uh, project to colonize um, to have a very militarized colony in west asia and hmm. Every yeah. time that, that 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 we go too deep into um, how how, uh, how should we think about this national and I mean Jewish people have had their own uh, uh, national self determination for centuries in the diaspora in their own ways in their own cultures and and the Ashkenazi self de determination was completely different than than the, the Mizrahi self determination in Yemen which was I mean that's. Uh, hmm. That, that has never really been a problem until some uh, Austrian uh, petty bourgeois thinkers suddenly thought, oh, we, we also have to be a nation and have a nation state. And but yeah, he was. It only about, yeah, this, this idea was so. State. Yeah, this yeah. idea was so stupid. It only became popular as soon as. Um, First British and later American imperialist, the, the imperialist bourgeoisie, the the, the 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 colonial forces, as soon as they understood what 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 would be in for them, and then suddenly there was a lot of money flowing into the project. There yeah. was a lot, and and suddenly Zionism became a a, a realizable um, project. Mm. But only because of um, people like Balfour, only because of of the the the. First British and later American and 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 German uh, imperialist bourgeoisie. Yes, even the support of uh, of uh, the USSR under Stalin, and the arms that were provided yes. by the socialist Czechoslovakia. Well, they had a lot of support, and the uh, Palestinians were isolated. Yeah, and they weren't getting support until a year after the Nakba started. They finally got you know some support from Jordan and Iraq, you know, to stop the advance of the Zionist forces at the Green Line which was much further than the partition plan had outlined, by the way, which is the only sort of, you know, legal sort of uh, uh, credibility that the Zionist state has is the partition plan. So they should go back to the partition plan, <laughs> which is yeah. half of the 48 territories. But I have a complaint to make about the Israeli Jewish anti-Zionist movement, mm -hmm. which is that they are still so educated and indoctrinated by the Zionist, you know, educational system, that when they refer to apartheid and supremacy by the Zionist uh, state, they call it Jewish, because that's what the Zionists call it. You know. Yes. So why do they call it Jewish supremacy? They've used that term repeatedly. Betzlam, for instance, they talk about Jewish supremacy. I don't think that the Zionism, you know, represents Jewish supremacy. I think Zionism represents Zionist, you know, uh, Western Occidental supremacy. They have no claim to the Jewish name. This is my contention, you know, as a Jewish Bundist. And this is not being recognized, you know, by the Jewish uh, Israeli, you know, anti-Zionist opposition. Anti-Zionist, yes, but they haven't broken, you know, completely from Zionism. They're still calling the apartheid Jewish. And they still can think of the state as being Jewish even though that's just an artificial construct and it's just a law. It's not even a, you know, constitutional, you know, provision because they don't have a constitution. They don't have frontiers, you know, they have, they're nothing, you know, it's like a, you know, pseudo state. And it, it's, the only, it's the only state in the world who has to start every meeting by acknowledging that they have a right to exist. Um <laughs> My country, Belgium, is is an absurdity. Uh, it was an absurdity when it was started, and it still is, but every country is. But I've never seen our prime minister starting a speech somewhere abroad saying, and Belgium has a right to exist. I mean, that, that uh -huh. if you have to start every meeting by acknowledging your right to exist, then there must be a problem. 
<laughs> yes, the problem of ex the existential issue. Okay, the other uh, uh, point to, to be made here is that I want to make a, a shout out to the um, Jewish Socialist Group in England. Marvelous, marvelous, sophisticated organization. And they've put out a, a um, they've uh, put out, you know, documents, you know, in 2003, they put out a, a, a document, you know, about the Jewish Bund, in effect, declaring themselves to be Bundists. So, mm -hmm. you know, they've developed on their own, you know, not because, you know, we had any direct influence on them. So I think that, uh, as you said, you know, Bundism, Jewish Bundism is going to become, you know, a self-evident uh, consciousness uh, in uh, amongst all the new generations of Jewish oppositionists. So uh, we can look forward to that. And uh, then we can set up an international federation of all the Jewish Bundist chapters that are activists right now. Because the old Jewish labor bund is not up to the task. One, the headquarters in Paris at the, uh, the Maidam Center, you know, uh, did not come out, uh, did not oppose the uh, occupation of Gaza by the Zionist state. Uh, and two, the uh, uh, the uh, Jewish uh, Bundes, you know, cultural movement in Melbourne. Hey. And, Hi. 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 Sorry. And uh, I was just finishing the uh, point, you know, that uh, the old Jewish labor bunds. Hey, Mike, you see me? Alaska. Yes. I can't uh, hear you at all. Oh, no? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah, can you hear me? Uh, hold, hold on. Try now. Can I you hear me hear now? You. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, we can hear you fine. perfectly. We hear you, okay, yes. Okay, I, I am going to turn off the camera because I'm driving, okay? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Drive safely. I am. Yeah, my, yeah. What's up? Okay. So I was just going to finish saying that... Uh, Um, the uh, uh, a Jewish a socialist group in England is the most uh, politically sophisticated there. There is another group of uh, academics called uh, Jewish uh, Voices, uh, Independent Jewish Voices, which is different than the Canadian organization, which is called that uh, as well. But uh, the uh, British uh, organization uh, are not activists. They're basically academics, but they put out an excellent you know, video of interviews with each of their prominent members you know, explaining why they're anti-Zionist. But the Jewish Socialist uh, group are Bundes. <clears throat> they've gone further, you know, they've uh, they've solved the uh, riddle of how to speak to the Jewish people. It's not just a matter of Jewish people speaking to the general public, but they have figured out that the Jewish anti-Zionists have to speak to other Jewish people as well in the name of the Jewish Bund in order to undermine the uh, Zionist uh, party's uh, dictatorship, basically, over the Jewish people at this point. Mm -hmm. And then we can reverse that. Okay, where is Steve? I, I don't remember. I'm right here. Okay. Uh, right. Have, Steve, have you uh, uh, met up with Red Wasp uh, already? No. This... No, uh -huh. hello. Hello, how are you? How are you doing? Nice. Peace and blessings. Nice to meet you. Greetings from nice Belgium. Nice to meet you. Wow, man. Belgium. Yes. That's like the, this oh, broad when I, when border I hear Belgium, the Netherlands like, and France. It, Sorry? No, one, one person comes to mind. Who, King when Leopold? I hear Belgium, one person comes to mind. Yeah. No, Patrice Lumumba. No, oh, Patrice, Patrice Lumumba. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, okay. Leopold and Patrice Lumumba are very connected. And I think you should also know Lumumba, the, 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 um, there was also Steve Mulele, uh, the, the, there was also Mulele, uh, Pierre Mulele. There were several um, uh, uh, revolutionaries, but they were quite anti-Belgium um, for very good reasons. Yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, also... It is, yeah. um, it's also in this country where two very bearded people in the 19th century wrote a little book, which was called The Manifesto of the Communist Party, that later became hey, a bestseller. Hey, so hey, hey, so hey, 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 <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's pretty good, brother. I like that, man. I never heard that before. 
I never heard that before. Thank you. I appreciate you. Hey, um, hey. Hey, hey. The great book. You know what? Yeah. I put I put that on my personal profile for dating, and nobody dates me. That's okay. Is it, <laughs> what's my favorite book? I said, no, no, I seriously, it's there. The Thomas Manifesto. But I have to be clear what I'm about. I, I, nobody's interested. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. So, so how is it? How is the pro Palestine movement in Belgium? Is it banned like in Germany or what? No, 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 no. Um, well, first of all, I think Germany is an extreme case. Um, there oh, yeah. was a lot of repression all over the planet, but Germany is really. Um, I know Horrible. Jewish yeah. comrades there who are um, only almost weekly being arrested by Aryan police people for being anti-Semites. So it, yeah. it's like um, they, 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 they pushed it to an absurd level. Mm. And here in Belgium, I think in the last year, there was quite a lot of space, especially the city where I live in Ghent. Um, we've been able or the students been able to occupy the university buildings uh, with an encampment for months without actually having any real problems um the, the, there have been uh, blockades of roads um here in uh, our city actually the mayor has posed with the palestinian flag and um so but oh. The last few months, we start to feel that I, I think uh, the, the Belgian <laughs> government has been uh, criticized by the rest of the world bourgeoisie, and they're trying to um, uh, uh, have more repression. Um, it's still, uh, yesterday we had an action where we actually disturbed the um, opening of the academic year at the university. Uh, it was like this big parade of all the um, professors in medieval robes and um, we actually stopped them. They had to uh, get into the university um, through the back so they couldn't make their big triumphant entrance. And um, the police was there, but there were no arrests. There were So we have a relative, um, there is relative freedom compared to other places in the world. On the other mm -hmm. hand, one of my housemates had uh, a five hundred dollar uh, fine for an action. Um, so mm -hmm. I think they're uh, uh, leveling up the the repression. But uh, I hope that the Zionist state will fall before they can do that. Mm. I am myself I'm going on that. trial. Uh, January fifth is my trial for criminal mischief, and we're doing a constitutional defense of freedom of expression. So I expect that we're going to win. But I'm on trial, and I've been in prison four days already. So, uh, and that's in Quebec. Quebec is the most hospitable, you know, most sympathetic, you know, to the Palestinians. So, um, I think that we can we can win it here. Yes. I, I was going to ask the fine that your comrade was assessed. Is there a cloud? Are they doing cloud fundraising for it, or what? Yes. Um, uh, actually, I, I, I live in a squat. We we have a whole cafe, and we will, will do some uh, fundraisers here. And yeah, of course. And um, every good revolutionary movement has a few petty bourgeois supporters who have more money than uh, the average. So um, we will try to find ways to raise that. Um, it, it shouldn't be that individuals have to pay for being activists. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. What, 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 I, what I was asking, what I was implying is if there is a cloud fundraising program, I could give you five or ten dollars toward the 500 oh. that, that, that might help. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I should ask him. I, I'm, yeah. I'm really um, an old fashioned person from last century, and I'm not used to the fact that indeed we can organize this on the internet. I was still yeah. thinking, how can we do yeah. it? But um, I will ask if there is like um, uh, uh, some kind of crowdfunding. I don't know. Right. Like, buy me a coffee. You know, buy me a coffee. Go fund me. The, you know, yeah. the different the, the different ones people do, and they're pretty easy to set up. So if if you know if so you get if if there's a way I can give you guys ten dollars, I'd be happy to do it. I okay. um. I will uh, share it over wire uh, if there is a, a GoFundMe. Um, I, I cool, will know that you. tonight or tomorrow, inshallah. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, Steve, we've done uh, reports on where we think the the uh, anti-Zionist movement is at, you know, from both optimistic and pessimistic points of view. Uh, I wonder if you hey. have a report to make. Do you want do you want to make a statement now? Well, I actually do have I actually do have a report to make, and it's somewhat pessimistic, but I'm just going to give my opinion, okay? Um, and you know, please don't take it the wrong way because you might. I think that Hezbollah suffered a very severe blow this week. Uh, and the people of Lebanon, they suffered a very severe blow with this use of the, of the weaponized cell phones and, and uh, electronics. And with the murder of, the, of some top people in um, Lebanon. I think that Nasrallah should go to Iran as soon as possible. Get the fuck out of there. Because they're after his ass and they're going to kill him. That's, I mean, that's my opinion. Okay, it's just, I have no evidence on anything, but I think they should leave as soon as possible, or go only with the trusted people. They should be very careful because Israel's determined to kill him, and mm -hmm. they're picking them off like they're picking them off. They're picking them off like flies, man. Um, there have been some security breaches. Obviously, the CIA is involved in this. You know, uh, other intelligence agencies. I think Nasrallah is next, and I. I shouldn't say that because I'm a supporter of the group, but I don't like what I see. Um, the use of the weapon, that's, the weaponization of of uh, electronic good, electronic goods is is beyond. It's it's terrorism on steroids, and um, um, I do think we need to talk about it and pro and make make it clear that this is a, this is unacceptable in warfare in in general, but at the same time, Israel wants a fight and they're taking the fight to Lebanon and the Lebanese, the Lebanese nation really can't, can't talk. I was reading, I listened to this TV report last night from TNT, I think TRT, the Turkish station. And mm -hmm. uh, they were just, they, 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 and they had interviewed the dots and doctors and some, you know, medical people. They said so far, these injuries that they've seen with to the hands, the eyes, the ears, blinding, it's something many doctors have never seen before, but so far the healthcare system can hold up, but it might not hold up under a large scale warfare or if Israel starts bombing the hospitals. So I do think we have a problem in Lebanon. Solidarity is very important. Um, I don't know what else to say. And I'm sorry if I'm being pessimistic, but I do think we have a situation in Lebanon is very precarious and dangerous. Yeah. Yes. I think Nasrallah should, I think Nasrallah should get the fuck out as soon as he can leave or go deep underground because they're out there they're out to get them out to get them. but i think one of the things that um and and, and this is this, this whole anti-terrorism mindset that, that that's been invented in uh, after uh, uh september 11 2001 that um terrorism is like these big um leaders and of course these leaders they they have an important role um but um if they're able to 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 kill uh, the the leadership of Hezbollah, there, there, there there's a new leadership already uh, um, being trained to replace them. Um, they have wounded three thousand sure. people, but many of them were civilians. And actually, things like that that that's something that the the, the, the um, incredibly stupid person who invented the Dahia doctrine. Um, it, it has the opposite results every time that they try it of, of what they intended because they make the people there more radicalized in their anti-Zionism. True. And I think that Israel I mean, right now does not have the means to 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 go into um, a full-scale war with Hezbollah. Um, it, it's they already have a problem maintaining their war as it is now. Um, but there is the, the Netanyahu factor. Of course, Netanyahu um, will want to have his war because as soon as the war is over, um, there will be a new government and he will probably be in jail, not even for war crimes, but for petty uh, corruption. Um, so he wants to have more wars. But I think that material, uh, materialistically speaking, the Zionist colony is at, at its um, limits of what it can do militarily. And they're trying to overstretch this, probably hoping that uh, the big brother from the other side of the Atlantic will step in. But um, they already have problems in Ukraine. They already have problems in China uh, or around China. They're all... 
I mean, the the the, the American Empire is also actually being shaken uh, um, a lot. So I I think that in the the. the the near future, probably things for the people in the, the West Asia, in Lebanon, in uh, Syria, in uh, uh, Palestine, will get worse. But um, that that's just a, a wild beast that that, that uh, feels that it's dying and 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 tries to have like its last burst of aggression. Friends, friends okay. of mine from um, uh, from Tel Aviv, uh, comrades who are very anti-Zionist. They say that general, normal people in the streets, especially people slightly older, uh, older than 40, 50s, uh, um, they speak about Zionism in the past tense. It's uh, the idea that we had, and they're already thinking about what will happen after Zionism. Okay. Yeah. Well, I got you. Yeah, I had a more pessimistic, yeah. pessimistic view of that because uh, the uh, base of support of the Zionist movement uh, uh, inside the Jewish people is still very strong, and uh, that's all they need to to continue with, you know, because they're being funded, you know, unlimited uh, military backup by the U.S., you know, which is not about to disappear. So the Zionist state, I think, is uh, can still hold on, you know, for quite a while until we undermine the base of support that it has amongst the Jewish people. Which is the work of the uh, Jewish Socialist Bund that has to be accomplished. Let me say one thing. Um, I was at work a couple of days ago, and I was stunned at what a colleague said to me. She mm -hmm. she had mentioned something about technology. I said, "Oh, technology? Well, you better talk. You better talk to people in Lebanon about some technology." So mm -hmm. she closed the door to our office and said, "You know, that was some real imperialist terrorism, wasn't it?" I was like, oh, my God. No, I, I was like, whoa, okay. I'm like, mm, okay, what's he got to say? So some people were really, some people, this is a random colleague, not, you know, I had no idea. They were this appalled by this. So I don't think that, I don't think that the actions in Lebanon by Israel got everybody's approval. This is one person I know. Because you know, and they, 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 they said they said imperialism. They said it, not me. I'm like, okay. I'm like, oh, oh I was like, Dang. I was like, whoa. Anyway, I was, I was shocked, pleasantly surprised. Yes, yeah, a, a very good indication. Yeah, it's yes, like it was. That, it uh, was. Yeah, sure. You know the <laughs> the degree to which you know like the changes taking place amongst people. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it, it, I'm telling you, it, yeah, I, I, I was trying to make the issue about Lebanon technology, like your phone may blow up to me in our hand. As you say, oh yeah, I, that was imperialist. I was yeah. like, whoa. Yeah, that was, I was like, whoa, okay. I, yeah. yeah, yeah, very yeah. personal, right, right. Yeah. yeah, anyway. That's bloody personal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think something that, that, that you, um, uh, Abraham, have already touched upon a few times. I think that... Um, as I said, there are a lot of young Jewish radicals right now who are, um, I think that there have never been so many Jewish bunds as there are today. So um, there, there's mm -hmm. too many bunds, not enough bundists. Um, I think one of the first most important and most urgent tasks for the, the, the Jewish radical socialists um, will have to be to unite all these different uh, movements which all want, um, not the reformists, I mean, there are still uh, people who call themselves Bundists, but who, who are actually Zionists, who, who uh, support all yeah. of imperialism. I mean, the real uh, radical socialists. There has to be, we have to find a way to them on an international scale, that there is a unity of action, a unity of propaganda, and that they actually can become a factor like they were in, in, in Poland as you said um before the war like they were um in in in, in Latvia in in, in uh, um Lithuania when the, I mean um the Jewish the the the, the movements in um Lithuania as the Jewish bunt and then or started from Jewish intellectuals who studied socialism. And from this movement, um, 
socialist mo uh, movement around Plekhanov and the Bund started from the same study groups. I think that this is something very urgent and all that we need is to find ways to connect these people and, and, and to connect with these people because the motivation is already there. We have an incredible talent, so, so they... Um, it used to be like 10 years ago, um, I think there were like maybe a hundred real uh, uh, socialist Bundists on the whole planet. Um, this is no, uh, I think there are a hundred times so many. There are uh, over 10,000 people who really identify with this movement and who want to do something. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, you have to do it. I, I know. I think uh, if if there's a certain periods, you know, of organizational activity that one can refer to, you know, there's the revolutionary process, there's the pre-revolutionary period, and we seem to be into something, you know, that is like a pre-pre-revolutionary, you know, period. I don't know what to call it, right? You know, but there is the for formation of a movement, you know, which has a revolutionary dynamic to it. And is becoming conscious of itself, you know, as being a revolutionary movement as well. You know, when you have 10,000 people here in Montreal, you know, at a demonstration for Gaza, you know, chanting, you know, international intifada, worldwide revolution, you know, like, you know, it's pretty clear, you know, what they mean. Like, you know, anybody can understand that. Um, a year ago, uh, all over the world, that people dare to say from the river to the today in the streets, they... Uh, Intifada revolution. There is only one solution: Intifada revolution. I mean, yeah. I hear it in Ghent, I hear it uh, everywhere in the United States. Yeah, yeah. A shift in consciousness happening, um, and it has been happening on the internet, um, but purely on the, the, the consciousness level. Well, no, this business is meeting praxis, and this is really. Uh, you should we should study what our comrades in Russia wrote in August uh, 1917 because they were also debating are we in a kind of a pre-revolutionary or pre-pre-revolutionary and what will happen in the next few years and how do we have to organize in October there was the revolution hmm. read Lenin it's... Lenin was like we have to do something and try to make okay but um, I think he himself used the the, uh, um, the the term we have been overtaken by history. Sometimes history goes faster than the revolutionaries, and we have to try to have at least the same pace. Oh, I'm open to that. I'm I'm open to that suggestion for sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see now. Okay, so we've gone for more than an hour, so let's conclude now. Uh, uh, my my conclusion for the discussion that I that I come to is that uh, we have a crucial role to play. We have to become the uh, the um, catalyst, I think is the scientific term. Yes, we are the catalyst or should become the catalyst for a uh, the ignition of a critical mass of, of opposition that becomes a revolutionary movement. You know, this is, you know, the the spark the spark is another concept, you know, that's used, you know, to, to denote, you know, the role that we have to play here. So as a catalyst, I think that we have a particular role to play and that we've been doing it and it's been working and that the Jewish Bund, you know, that I am speaking for, you know, has to do it, you know, within the Jewish people as well. And then there, the results will be, you know, spectacular. So, and I think the potential is very great there, you know, for the Jewish Bund to be understood, you know, as uh, a necessary movement against the Zionist parties. And I'm looking forward, you know, to that moment. Okay. And uh, let, let us each uh, take a turn to conclude here, and then we can uh, upload it. Yes, a red, red wasp. Yeah. I, I think that um, your conclusion was very good. I only want to uh, add one um, very materialistic angle to it. Um, we have we have very good ideas. We have theory. We have good analysis. But there was this um, a, a Jewish prophet with a big beard called Karl Marx, and he said that um, theory can only become a materialist uh, a material force if it grips the masses. So we have to find ways to get 
analysis into propaganda, propaganda on the right um, frequency, uh, the, the, the right wavelength that really all the people, um, the, the young people especially, the motor of the revolution, that they can understand it. We have to find ways. Um, for the last, I think, 10 years, I've been studying Judaism and, and, uh, it, it, and its history. There's such a beautiful revolutionary tradition there. If we can find ways to um, help young people reconnect with that, I think that there, there's a bomb. And we will do, inshallah, the same thing in Islam because they're uh, just these are two different names for the same prophetic socialist communist uh, tradition. Um, and if we can do that, and we find ways to really bring this uh, to the masses, I think that we have a very dangerous cocktail for the bourgeoisie. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, Steve, Steve Struggle. What is yeah, the conclusion I, my, we can make there? My conclusion is stay organized, be honest, be humble, and move forward. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so uh, we ask all our viewers to share, share, share. And uh, here we go for this week. Okay. Great. Bye for now, comrades. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.